Okay, and welcome back students taking financial accounting. You know, we're working on the chapter one problems, the group B, and, and we're working in this set of videos on the problem 1-39B. So in the last video, um, we had created the income statement. So now we need to create a statement of retained earnings. Right, this is our income statement, and remember, we're going to need this 59,100, our net income, in order to be able to do the statement of retained earnings. So let's get to it here. All right, so um, Alpha Inc. And again, you know, I'm abbreviating. Don't you do it um, when you're act, you know when you're doing the homework problem? Fine, but if you're going to send it in for a test, you know, if you're giving this, you know, when you're doing it for your the easiest. The way you think about it is if you're doing it for yourself, take all the shortcuts you want. But realize that, you know, you're taking the shortcuts because you understand, you know, the underlying concepts and you're only doing it for yourself. If you're giving it to anybody else, it should be done properly. And that means all of your formatting should be correct. Okay. And I've uh, expressed that um, in the other exercises, and you're also able to look at the homework problems and see how they're being presented. That's the correct way of doing it. Okay. Formatting is simple. You just need to just copy it. Okay. For those who like to copy and mimic, you know, there should, you know, you shouldn't have any issues with formatting, right? You just need to copy exactly what it is, what's there. And the only, you know, if there's a change that needs to be made, well, then the change needs to be made. Okay. And you have to deal with it, but that's why under understanding the underlying concepts is important, so that you can make those deviations from what you see and understand and know what you're what you're you're doing. All right. So the uh, get my pen here. So then this here is the statement of retained earnings. I'm abbreviating, and the heading is for the year ending October 31, 2014. And the heading for the statement of retained earnings is the same as the heading for the income statement as far as the data is concerned because they're both for periods of time. Okay, so, and like I had said in the previous video, when you're doing these financial statements, it helps to go through a, to a certain extent, a step-by-step -step process and fill in the information um, so that you don't miss anything, so that you, you know, you know what goes on. So the first thing we do is put in the heading. Then the next thing we do is we uh, create our beginning and end date. So I have retained earnings. And then the date, which would be November, first 2013 now in the previous video I had said you know I had discussed you know this date you know our year ending is 2014 but um, the I'm sorry these figures are for 2014 okay but the information here let's say um, it's telling us right here that our ending uh, retained earning balance of the business was 75,600 for as of October 31st, 2013. You know, that is an ending date for the previous accounting period and the ending ending dates um, ending figures become the beginning figures for the new uh, the new accounting period. So even though the textbook is telling you that this beginning date should be October 31st, 2013, you know, I feel that is incorrect because this is supposed to be the beginning date of the next accounting period. Okay. Now, if for some reason you happen to put October 31st, you know, 2013 there, um, you know, it, you know, it's not going to get marked wrong, you know, from out, from an educational perspective. Because we know that the ending day ending amounts become the beginning amounts, but if you're in the real world, you would not put the last date. You would put October for uh, November first. Okay. So that's the beginning, 
our ending is retained earnings. And the ending date here was October 31, 2014. Okay. And the reason why we're putting in dates because even though this uh, statement is for the year ending October 31st, which is reflected here, I could use a different date as my beginning date. Okay. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to use November 1st. All right. And so that's why you put it in. Okay. So once we have that and we know from our data, right, that the beginning amount was $75,600. Oops. $75,600, okay, from the previous year. So we uh, fill in that amount, and since it's the first number, you know, we put the dollar sign. Okay, then we have add, we're going to add, and then we have less. Okay, and remember, by writing the word add and less, this tells us to add and subtract. So any of the numbers we put here are positive numbers. If I put less and then I actually put a negative number, what that's telling me is to add the numbers together. Okay, and that's not correct. By having the, the word add and less in the description tells me what to do with the numbers over here. So we're going to add in our net income. Okay, so this is like the, the next step in the process. And we know that the net income from our income statement was 59,100 right here. So I put in the 59,100 and I'm going to subtotal that. Okay. So I draw a line, it shows my calculation, and that gives me $134,700. Okay. Then next, we have less our dividends. Okay. That's all part of the process. And again, one, the first thing we do is put the heading. Second, we put in our beginning and end dates. Third, we add and subtotal. Fourth, you know, less our dividends. And from our data up here, it had said you know, our dividends were 28,500. I'm sorry, 28,000. So I'm going to subtract out the 28,000, but notice I wrote it as a positive number. Why? Because of the word less here. The word less tells me I'm subtracting the 28,000. And since we're going to calculate that, I draw my underline, and the difference between the two is 106,700. And since that's the end of the calculation, I have a double underline and I put my dollar sign. And that's my ending balance um, on my retained earnings as of October 31st, 2014. Okay, so if we go back up to our homework problems, uh, I mean up to the data here in our homework problem, you know, now we've, uh, we actually did number two because we created the income statement and the statement of retained earnings. And notice that um, when we did the income statement, we answered this question, you know, what was our profit or loss for the year? Well, that was 59,100. Now it says, what was the increase or decrease of the retained earnings for the year? Okay. Well, the increase or decrease is the difference between our beginning and our end, right? So if we started out at 75,600 and we ended up with 106,000, okay, that means our statement, I mean, our retained earnings increased by um, 31,000. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Nope, I'm sorry. Let me back up. We We, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of this in two different two different ways, and I'm getting myself confused. And I actually wrote the wrong number there, so bear with me for a second. So my beginning amount was seventy-five thousand six hundred, 
and my ending amount is 106,700. I wrote one hundred. I wrote zero zero there, so I wrote the wrong number. Okay. Well, the difference between those is um, one. Let's see here. <laughs> one three okay there I've got it um, it's the difference between those two 75,600 it increased to 106,700 so the difference between the two is 31,100 okay now I could have done it this way and this is why I'm getting myself a little confused because I'm trying to do two things at once here okay um, remember, my net income was 59,100. Well, I could have then subtracted um, twenty-eight thousand of dividends, okay, and that would also give me thirty-one thousand one hundred. Okay, so I could have done it uh, either way. I could have taken those two numbers, my net income less my dividends. Okay, which would give me give me my change in retained earnings, or I could have taken my beginning less my ending retained earnings and come out with the same thing, the change in retained earnings. Okay. So um, let me go over that again, just real quick as far as the change is concerned. Because I was stuttering and thinking and blah blah blah. All right, so oops, do this. There's an underline right here. Okay, so I want to know what the I want. The question is asking me what's the change in my retained earnings, and I can do this one of two ways. I can take um, the beginning less my ending. So seventy five six. And I have 106.7, and when I subtract the two, I end up with 31,100. Okay, so that's my change, 31,100. Right? That's the answer to that question. I could have also done it by taking the net income and subtracting out my dividends. Okay. When we're looking at our income statement, and this gets to be a little bit more advanced. Um, we don't. Uh, it's not net income. We have a profit or loss here of 59,100, and then from that we subtract out um, our dividends. Okay, so instead of calling this net income, it would be called profit or loss, and then we subtract out our dividends, and then that gives us um, our total profit or loss. Right. So here. We can take the 59,100, which is our net income, and subtract the 28,000 of dividends and still end up with 31,100, which is the amount that would actually get closed out to our retained earnings account. And that would, that's what, you know, if we take that 31,100 and we add it to the beginning of 75,600, that'll end up equaling the 106,700. So it's just uh, two different ways of doing it um, to arrive at the same exact number, okay? And it all depends upon the information that you're given, all right, which would determine which way you would end up doing it, okay? So I hope uh, you got that. Um, if not, then go ahead and you know go back and rewind the video and watch it again. Um, but for right now, you know that's answering. Uh, that's means we've actually done number two here where we created an income statement in the statement of retained earnings and we've answered a and b here because this is 31,100 right now the last thing that we have to do which will be in the next video will be to create prepare the balance sheet and when we prepare the balance sheet we'll know what our total assets are and our liabilities to be able to answer c and d all right so i'll see you in the next video